come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Ice and iron cannot be welded. A proposition that would seemingly need no further elaboration. And yet, how often do we find the spirit of this particular bit of self-evident common sense violated? Surely, if ice and iron cannot be welded, neither can December and May be wedded. But people never learn. And how fortunate it is for us, because if they did, whatever would we do for stories? Our mystery drama, My Wife Doesn't Understand Me, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Sinoff, the sinus medicines. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's the little things that count, not just in human behavior but in the operation of the incredibly complex machines that support our lives today. Little things, little almost insignificant wires, bolts, springs, tubes. And our story is concerned with a piece of cloth about an inch square, just a tiny bit of specially treated cotton cloth, the idea of which is worth millions. The possession... A matter of life and death. Horace, look. Marjorie, did you buy another one of those things? It was dirt cheap. I thought we'd reached an understanding. It was under $100. What is that beat-up thing? It's a chair, a genuine 17th century ducking stool. The farmer didn't even know what he had. (laughs) He sure had you. Horace, you simply don't know anything about antiques. I know I can't afford them. Not the way you buy them. Horace, I don't have time for one of your lectures on economics tonight. What's for dinner? Oh, Horace, I'm sorry. The girls and I were out all day and I didn't get back in time to... Um, let's see, there's some tuna fish. Damn it! Well, that's very good for you. Take some with tomato and have fruit for dessert and I'll see you later. Where are you going? I have a committee meeting. Now, listen here. I had to wait for you to come home so I could use your car. After all, you deprived me of mine. I did not deprive you. You cracked it up all by yourself, and I can't afford to have it fixed. All I know is I am the only girl in the crowd who does not have her own car, and it's quite embarrassing. Well, anyway, I can't stay here and argue all night. I'm late now. Mr. Bellows? Uh, Yes? You uh, called the pool for a stenographer? Oh, oh, yes, that's right, I did. Uh, Well, sit down. Oh, thank you. Uh, this is a letter to Caldwell and Glenn. And their address is in the files. Uh, gentlemen, in response to your inquiry concerning our centrifuge, if your basic fluid is our diethyl polypropanol sulfate, we suggest adherence to a specific gravity of... Uh, 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 wait a minute, don't write for a minute, Miss... Uh, uh, Miss... Uh, ja- Jackson. Uh, Miss Jackson, uh, I want to think... Uh, hand me that notebook on the corner of the desk there, if you will, please. Let me look this up. Diethyl polypropanol sulfate made for... Yeah, I thought so. Okay, uh, Miss Jackson, uh, read it back to me, please. Yes, sir. To Caldwell and Glenn, and I'm to look up the address. Gentlemen, in response to your inquiry concerning our, um... Our, our... This, this, this word... Centrifuge. Oh, centrifuge. If your basic fluid... Uh, fluid? No, no, wait, wait, wait. I, I think it's fluid. If your basic... That's right. It's a uh, fluid is... Um, uh. Uh, di, di, oh, Mr. Bellows, how do you spell that? Don't you have a shorthand way of writing that? Yes, sir, but it's a very strange word, and until I get used to it, I should write it out in longhand with centrifuge and fluid. What is this? Sir? I call for a steno because I have a simple letter to go out to a client and... Oh, please, and... sir, don't be angry. Well, I have a right to be angry. Those idiots and personnel. This is a chemical company. 
How can they hire a girl who's had no experience in scientific terminology? Sir, I'm, I'm willing to try. Well, that's not the point. This is a specialized situation. Please, Mr. Bellows, don't have them fire me. Well, they should never have hired you. Whatever I have to know, I could learn. I'm sorry. I'll work hard. I'll get a dictionary. That'll be all. I'll do anything. I said that'll be all? Yes. That'll be all. You say that'll be all to me, and do you know why? Because you're afraid to say that'll be all to your wife. How dare you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I shouldn't have said that. No. I am not sorry. I'm glad. You sit there and you judge me. You're God and I'm just dirt beneath your feet. Well, back home where it counts. You're nothing and nobody yourself, and they laugh at you. Everybody laughs at you. Now that I've said it, I'm going to go home and kill myself. Now, wait a minute, Miss Jackson. No. You're a very disturbed girl. I am not a girl. I'm a woman. I am 30 years old. I'll forgive you for that outburst because you're so obviously very troubled. What do you care? Now, look, Miss Jackson... You're not really qualified to work here. You'll have to admit that. Okay, I I admit it. So what? So what? Yeah, so what? Am I the only one who's unqualified? I at least want to become qualified. I'm willing to work, to learn. Miss Jackson... I have very little in this world. I have no family. I came to the city to find a job. I don't even know anyone here. Miss Jackson... Oh, your phone is ringing, and I know who it is. Do you? It's that Mr. Kirkhamer over in personnel. He'll want to know if my work is satisfactory. Please, Mr. Bellows, I know you're very strict and exacting. You're a chemist and a scientist and all that. But please, please have a heart just once. Have a heart. Bellows. Yes? Uh, yes, yes. I, uh, I, I find her satisfactory. That's right. Thank you. Let's get back to work. You spell centrifuge C E N T R I. But everybody made a pledge. You had no right to make a financial commitment without consulting me. None of the other girls have to consult with their husbands. Of course, they all have their own money. In the first place, quit calling yourselves girls. You're all 50 and 60 years old. In the second place, you have your own money, too. You simply don't know how to budget it. You call that, that allowance you give me money? It's all I can afford. Why do you stand for it? You are head of research for that company. Why are they getting you so cheaply? I'm doing the best I can. I'm sick of that argument. People know who you are. They think you're getting an income commensurate with your position. I'm expected to contribute accordingly to various charities to belong to certain organizations, to maintain a standard of living. It's a difficult job. You've got to cut down. One way to look at it. Another, you could go to work for another company. At my age? Oh, well, we always come back to the same point. I'll need the car tonight. You're going out again? Why? Is there something exciting happening around here? Good evening, Miss uh, Jackson. Well, what are you doing here? I don't know. Do you want to come in? Yes. Uh, May I take your hat? Thank you. I, uh, I went to the personnel section... I looked your name up in the files. That's how I got your address. Well, I'm... I'm glad you came. Why? I'm lonesome. So am I. Why? My wife doesn't understand me. (laughs) That's the greatest... Cliché. The greatest cliché of all time. I... I am glad you came here. I I wasn't thinking. Yes, you were. 
You might not have been aware of it, but you were thinking. I'm almost twice your age. I know. And I... I was sitting home alone, reading. She'd gone to some club meeting. She always has something doing. And I said to myself, I'm going out. And here I am. We've been through a lot together. How? We only met yesterday morning. It was quite a morning. The way we spoke to each other. Strangers don't talk like that. I liked you from the very first. I was very cruel to you. No, it wasn't you. It was something inside of you that's very upset. You're a troubled person. I know. What is it? I don't know how to tell you. It's just that I... I feel I've done everything wrong in my life. How can you say that? Well, you're a successful man. I feel like a failure. Put your arms around me. What? I... I don't know if I should. Don't you want to? Yes. Very much. Then take me in your arms. But I'm a married man. I know that. I may not be in love with my wife any longer, but... I don't believe in divorce. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't have any sensible reason. It's just that's the way I was taught to believe. I said it doesn't matter. I won't be able to marry you. I'm not asking you to. But I won't be able to give you anything. Will you be able to give me your love? Oh, yes. Yes. That's all I want. Won't you kiss me? Yes, that's what we male chauvinists need more of in this world. Undemanding women. Women who are satisfied just to be wanted, just to be needed, just to be loved. Women who are content just to be there. Ah, yes. Well, she's young, she's pretty, she's half his age... And while it may not be May and September exactly, uh, you could peg it at June and October. Well, time will tell. And in no time at all, I shall return with Act Two. I will... At the very beginning of this story, we said we would deal with a little patch of cloth about an inch or so in diameter, which could be worth millions. So far, however, all we've given you is a married man who is about to have an affair with his secretary. Well, we haven't forgotten the cloth. And it's still at the heart of our narrative. And we'll get to it in good time. Hart? Oh, you're home. Yes, well, that's a switch. I've been home all night. I thought you had a committee meeting. As a matter of fact, I did. Where were you? I went back to the plant, did some work. Horace, we, we just can't go on like this. I was sitting at this meeting, and suddenly it occurred to me that I didn't really care about Anything I was doing, all of it seemed to be a substitute for a marriage. You're doing what you want. You're active. You're collecting antiques, art. You're into community and cultural and all kinds of things. A substitute for a marriage. Oh, Horace. We started out 30 years ago. We were... Both out of college. We, you were a young engineer. Marjorie, what good is all this? Maybe we to... can find the place where we. No, no, the time is gone. You, you took a job. You always nagged me to make more money. I felt you were selling yourself cheap. But I had a chance to work. Work on exciting, vital, 
challenging project. But you wanted money, position, status. Maybe I was wrong. Now, now you say that. After I'm frozen into this job. That isn't true. You could go somewhere else. What, at my age? We still had some good years. Our best years are gone. But we could try. We tried when we began. What do you want, Marjorie? I... I'm frightened. I'm getting older. And I don't want to be alone. Oh, please, Horace. Let's try to make a go of it. Ah, excuse me. Who'd call at this hour? Hello? Darling? Yes? I just phoned to see if you'd gotten home safely. Oh, sure. Oh, I understand. Your wife is home. I shouldn't have called. No, no, that's perfectly all right. I didn't have anything to say except to tell you I love you. And now I'll say good night. Good night. Who was that? My secretary. Well, why does she call you at home at this hour? Well, I, I've given her some extra work to do, and I wanted her to let me know if she'd finished it. Is she young, your secretary? Yes. Uh, no, well, I, I don't know. No, I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't know what's come over me. Horace, I would like for us to salvage something. You and I, we have no one else. It's gravity. The greatest power in the world and you get it for nothing. The force of gravity. That's how the process works. Oh, you sound so different, so young. Young? Oh, you're so stiff and starchy in the office, but here you're so... You're so youthful. Am I? Am I really? Especially when you explain how these chemical things work. It's fascinating. Is it really? I used to think all of it was so dull and boring. But you, you make it seem so exciting. I haven't had a chance to talk like this to anyone in years. Not since my wife and I were younger. Oh, you're still young. Uh, Soon I'll be 60. You're so foolish. Youth is a state of mind, an, an attitude... Tell me, tell me more. About what? About what's closest to your heart, chemistry. No, I don't want to talk about chemistry anymore. But darling, why not? Because I sold out. Sold out? What are you talking about? I wanted to do great work. You are doing great work. Great original work. Great research. But I missed my boat. Are you sure it sailed? Oh, yes. Many years ago. That's how an old man talks. That's not my horse. There's more than one boat. Talk to me about about what we do at the plant. Uh, Well, actually, we make solvents. Oh, I know what those are. Especially diethyl polypropanol... Sulfate. You said that very nicely. <laughs> it was almost my Waterloo. Well, that's the big one. And ours is the best you can buy. Why? Because it's the purest. Well, that's what everyone says. Oh, it's true. But why? Because... Mm, mm, well, that's uh, top secret. Because of the filter? Say, where are you getting all this classified information? Everybody knows it. The silver is made out of a small piece of treated cotton. Let's change the subject. And you are the one who invented the special solution that cotton cloth is treated with. Yes. Yes. For all the good it did me. Everything you invent while you work for the company belongs to the company. They made millions. Still do. Well, you could go elsewhere. No, no. So many companies would like to know how that little piece of cotton is treated. I could never give away that secret. Why not? Well, because it isn't ethical. I made a bargain when I joined the company. The fact that it turned out to be a bad bargain for me doesn't give me the right to break it. 
Do you wonder why I love you? You are a man in a million. Do you really love me, Anne? Do you? Darling, why are you so insecure? Why do you refuse to believe me? I just can't believe my luck. My fantastic luck. I love you. And I'll keep saying it until I convince you. It's so peaceful here. (laughs) So wonderful. I never knew I could be so happy. Darling, that little piece of cloth, what do you treat it with? Well, it really gets very complicated. I don't want you to bother your head with it. I said I could follow it. All right, another time, darling. Another time. Horace? Yes? Another late night, I see. I told you not to wait up for me. I see you're paying me back. I'm the one who used to go out and now... We're swamped with work. And you get a lot of it done at Miss Jackson's house. Oh. A woman knows when her husband's having an affair. She's half your age. That doesn't mean anything. It means everything. Well, I'm sorry you found out. (laughs) Did you really think it could be kept a secret? Marjorie? What do you want to do about it? I want you to end it. End it? I'm prepared to forgive you. No, wait. I don't like the sound of that. It's probably my fault as much as yours. All of this understanding and sympathy. Where was it when I needed it? Horace, please. Why is a young girl attracted to an old man? I'm not an old man. I'm an older man. For his money. But you don't have that much. For gifts. What have you given her? To further her career, what can you do for her? To take her places, you never go anywhere with her. What does she see in you? Maybe this is why you and I are where we are right now, Marjorie. She sees in me what you never did. A depth. A dimension. A genius. All right. Granted, those things exist and maybe I never saw them. But what does she want with him at her age? She's after something, Horace. Yes, yes. She's after contentment, peace, love. I don't believe in divorce, but if you I want... don't believe in divorce either. Then what are we to do about it? I've been honest with you. And I'll be honest with you. I have a very sick husband... And I'd better find a way to help him before it's too... Where are you going? Where do you think? Just a minute. Who is it? It's me. Oh. Darling. What are you doing here? May I come in? Oh, of course I... I was just getting ready for bed. Yes, I know it's late. I, I'm feeling a bit woozy. Huh? Is something wrong? Oh, it must have been dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right, darling. You look worried. No, it's nothing. Something is wrong. It's Marjorie. She knows about us. Oh, I'm sorry. But it's one of those things that happen... Are you sorry we began? No, never. We'll work it out. I'm only sorry you're not feeling well. Oh, I'll be all right in the morning. You want me to stop by for you as usual? Of course, darling. All right, I better go. Horace, everything will be all right. Just seeing you makes me feel better. Please kiss me good night. Good night, dearest. I love you so much. And I love you. Good night. Donald? Come on in. Well, the chump is gone, I see. 
Yes, the chump is gone. Ooh, that was close. Well, baby, where were we before we were so rudely interrupted? Here we have a new character, Donald. Who Donald is, we can readily imagine. We also have a new name for an old character. To wit, Chump. Horace has now become Chump. But why? What are these people after? Patience, patience. The third act approaches. The French say, Cherchez la femme. Look for the woman. To which we should add, Cherchez l'homme. Look for the man. You should always look for the man. Or to be more exact, the other man when a young lady is dallying with a gentleman twice her age. Human nature, after all, simply cannot be denied. So, taking our own advice, we have looked for and found Donald. Baby, we are running a bit behind schedule. I am moving as fast as I can. Now, you simply have to find out what he does to that little hunk of cloth. I need time. We can turn it over for 50,000 bucks. Donald, I am doing the best I can. Although, if you want the truth, I don't know what all the fuss is about. That is because you are not a chemist, Donald, honey. <laughs> I always wanted to get hooked with a smart dame. All I have to do is write my thesis and I can have my master's degree. But just between the two of us, what is it all about? You really don't want to know. Oh... In certain delicate industrial processes, an absolutely pure solvent is vital. Uh-huh. Now, Horace's outfit, thanks to Horace's silver, makes the solvent that's the purest you can get. What, that little piece of cloth? Right. Okay. The filtration takes place through that piece of cloth. Nobody can figure out how he treats it. Ah, that's a ball game. But every day we delay... I'll break him down. Horace, why don't we see a marriage counselor? What for? What's he going to tell us? How to make our marriage work again. Again? It never worked. Oh, Horace, that's not true. We were in love... A very long time ago. I'm still in love with you. Do you... Do you realize how ludicrous you are? This girl is young enough to be your daughter. Marjorie, for whatever it is that we might have had back then, let me help you. Help me? How? Let me help you find the courage as I found the courage... To walk out and make a new life. You're still a good-looking woman. Horace, you can't start all over again. You can't pretend you haven't lived your life. You can't make believe the years haven't passed. We can't throw away our life together. We have to try to make it better. You refuse to understand what I'm saying. I don't want you to get hurt. I found someone who makes me feel young, alive, vital. Someone who excites me. Who makes me believe each day is an adventure. No, 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 she's not a smart girl like you were. She never went to college. She's not involved in the community. She's... A simple little stenographer. But she's bright and alive in a way that you never were. Well, I tried, Horace. I hope you and Miss Jackson will be very happy together. You're so quiet this evening, darling. I've decided to leave Marjorie. Divorce? If she wants it. I don't care. I... 
thought you didn't believe in divorce. That's because I never wanted one before. I want us to be together all the time. I want that too. I know so little about you, darling. <laughs> What's the tell? I grew up in a mining town in Pennsylvania. Went to high school. Got a job in the dime store. Mom and Pop died. and I came to the big city to seek my fortune. And eventually, I found it. You. You're the one that has a story. <laughs> the story of missed boats, fumbled opportunities. No, no, you mustn't talk that way. Well, it's true. I graduated summa cum laude. Took all the honors in chemistry and what happened to me. You are a successful man. Ah, for what? Little knick-knack commercial processes. I was going to set the world on fire. And you will. You do have something to be proud of. And it does bear your name. It's famous throughout the industry, the Bellows filtration process. Oh, that. But it's important to many vital products. Well, yes, I suppose so. Oh, you're too modest. I am proud of it, even if you are not. Well, I suppose I am proud of it. How does it work? Oh, you couldn't understand that. Suppose, just suppose, I had fallen in love with, well, Professor Albert Einstein. <laughs> you, you're adorable when you're crazy. I would be so proud of him. I would say to him, darling, tell me your theory. And he'd say to me, oh, my dear, you could never understand it. Now, wouldn't he say that? Yes, I guess so. And I'd say, I don't care. I want to hear it. And he'd say, why? And I'd say, look, if you were William Shakespeare, I'd want you to recite me your poetry. Now, do you follow this, Horace? You give me a kiss. It'll clear my mind. Your process, Horace, is your poetry. And I want to hear the poetry. Even if it makes no sense to you at all? <sighs> Who says poetry has to make sense? It's your poetry. I love you. And I love you. Put your arms around me. Now, recite. You get a cotton cloth. Mm hmm. With a heavy weave. The best is an old fashioned type. It's called Bengaline. You have the bluest eyes. Yes. Uh, well, you treat it with a special solution. The solution is the process? The bellows process? An intelligent girl. Remarkably intelligent. To assist in the bonding, you send a positive charge through the cloth and a negative charge through the solution. And? Now, the process itself. The vehicle is called... Monsell solution. Mm, so handsome. It was a World War I astringent. It shrinks the fibers. It, it, do, do you follow all this? Not a word, but I'm fascinated. Now, equal parts bromine, which has to be handled carefully, just like the girls you love. Yes, be careful. And selected nitrites. And in effect, that's my poem. And that's the famous Bellows process? Hmm, essentially. Do you understand it? I can't make head or tail of it, but it sounds beautiful. A work of art. And now, do you know what we're going to do? No. We're going to find a beautiful apartment. Oh, I'd love that. Where would you like to live? We'll talk about that at dinner tonight. You are taking me out. To the finest restaurant in town to celebrate. Yes, that's right. We have nothing to hide now. Come back here and pick me up at, um, 8 o'clock. Oh, well, that's five hours from now. I have to get ready for you. I'll have to take a bath and, uh, do my hair and my nails. I'll just about have enough time. Well, all right, darling. I'll, I'll, I'll see you at 8. You'll be ready. Don't you be late. <laughs> Donald, I got it. Oh, great. Can we run with it? Not yet. What's the matter? I have to test it out. How long will it take? 
Well, I have to set up some materials and equipment. That should take an hour, and then I'll need another hour or so to... I'll be here for five. Be- between five and six. And have your customer lined up. Cash on the bell here. And the chump? He will ring the bell at eight. Oh, what a shame. There'll be no one home. And, uh... I'll put the house in your name, Marjorie. That's very generous of you, Horace. We can settle all this amicably. Of course. I I really dropped by to see if there is any mail. Uh, No. I'm sorry, there wasn't. Oh. There was a letter for me. And, uh... It's a letter, I suppose, that concerns you. Me? How? It's embarrassing to say this, but uh, back in the days when I was being unreasonable about you and Miss Jackson, I did something I'm thoroughly ashamed of, and you will never forgive me. Oh, I forgive you. Without even knowing what I did? Knowing you, I'm sure it's nothing very bad. I think it's utterly reprehensible, and I must confess. I... I hired a private detective. What for? I had a despicable motive. I was hoping he could unearth some dirt about Miss Jackson. I was a fool. He could find nothing uncomplimentary. Do you think she'll forgive me? I'm sure she would. But I'll never mention it. What did the report say? You'll be glad to know that you underestimated her. How? You had told me she was a simple little steno who never went to college, didn't have much education. That's what she told me. I'm sure she's being modest. She has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering. She... what? And she's practically qualified for her master's. That's... that's impossible. So now I understand that two of you have the bond of common interest. So maybe it can work. And maybe I was wrong. I wish you the very best. Let me see that letter. Horace. What is it? Horace. Give me that letter. What's the matter? The letter. Give me the letter. Horace. Hello, Anne. It, it's only 4.30. You're a little early. Yes. Uh, on the other hand, I may be a little late. Washed your hair yet? Horace. Funny smell in here. W- w- really? No, no, it's it's not funny. It's familiar. It's very familiar. Very sharp. Pungent. It's coming from the other room. Why don't we see what it is? It's nothing, Horace. Nothing. Why don't you write your thesis and get your masters? What? What, what are you talking about? Why don't you write it on the bellows process, huh? Please, Horace, I don't... I don't Everything know. you told me about love, it was a lie. All you wanted was the process. You lied to me. All right. And what did you want? A young girl, fresh, bright. You wanted romance, excitement. Did I cheat you? All you wanted was the bellows process. Right. But you got to run for your money. And now get out of here. Go on back to your wife. You don't know when you're well off. You think you can just take the bellows process? Think so? I know so, Grandpa. I've come here to give you something else. You see... As long as you've taken the Bellows process, you should also get the Bellows reaction. 
The fellow's reaction, what's that? When Bellows is cheated, deceived, scorned, when his heart is transformed into just a casual thing to be broken and thrown away, he has a reaction. And it's this. Oh, oh, thank God. This oh, oh, is the bellows reaction. No, please, please. Oh. The bellows reaction. The bellows reaction. <laughs> Bellows never stood trial. He was found insane. And he is still in a prison hospital. Where all he does all day long is mumble the Bellows reaction. The Bellows reaction. Nobody knows what it means. Except, of course, you and me. His wife, naturally, visits him regularly. One day, she hopes, they will resume their normal life. I hardly think so. I shall return in just a few moments with the moral of our story. The moral to our story. There's no fool like an old fool. For a variety of reasons. First... If he's been foolish all his life, he's had ample opportunity to practice and polish his folly. Second, if he comes to foolishness late in life, he can bring to it the wisdom and experience of maturity and thus perform his foolishness with a certain style and grace. Third, well, anyhow, our subject tonight was Horace Bellows, who became foolish for only once in all of his 60 years. But that once was enough. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Terry Keene, and Rosemary Rice. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.